morning. Father Michael here, just about to head over to church to begin the Advent season. Maybe my favorite season of the year, I don't know. So there I was a few years ago, practically kneeling on the floor because I'm trying to pull out the hospital pad from under my mother who was slipping in and out of consciousness. She had been unable to climb the stairs to get to her room for some months. So we had moved her to the dining room, moved a hospital bed in, cleared out the table and things like that. The dining room, the sight of so many great festive gatherings in the family, five generations at one time all coming together for Thanksgiving and Christmas and Father's Day, Mother's Day, those kinds of things. So it was a room filled with laughter and good memories and positive energy. The perfect place for my mother to make her transition. So there I am trying to assist the hospice nurse and my brother was also there, mostly unwillingly, but I had shamed him <laughs> into helping with this not so easy task of changing my mother's adult diaper one last time. It's amazing, really, how heavy a human body really is, regardless of the size of it, <laughs> how heavy a body really is when the person you're trying to move is unable to assist in any way. My mother was dying of congestive heart failure and she should have been wearing her CPAP uh, for years but had refused. So if you're one of those people, put your damn mask on and live longer. The end. Anyway, here we are. We're at the end game, so to speak. She's in and out of consciousness, like I said. And it is an amazing event, truthfully, because each of her six kids managed to get there before she passed away, when she was still semi-conscious to ask for forgiveness, to, to extend forgiveness sometimes, to, to let her know that we were grateful for everything she'd done. It was a stereotypical soap opera kind of death to that point. But, now we are getting close to that time of transition and her diaper needs changing. So <clears throat> I had just given her general absolution and the hospice nurse said, we need to change this diaper to keep her comfortable. Can you help? Well, of course, I'm going to help. Well, my brother scampered away <laughs> into the other room because he was not going to have any part of it. So I chased in there after him and I said, what are you doing? We need your help right now. And he said, I can't. I can't do it. I'll puke. Which annoyed me. And so I told him, no, no, you're not going to puke because this is what you need to do. She changed your last diaper, damn it. You are going to help us change her last diaper. Because love isn't always about cupcakes and freaking unicorns. Sometimes love is nothing but shit. 
Now get in here. <laughs> so it worked, and he did, and we did, and I had been right. No cupcakes, no unicorns, just got there. And when it was over, and our mother was cleaned up and made comfortable once more, a great relief and a sense of peace came over me. At the Last Supper, in John's Gospel, chapter 13, Jesus is very clear about what needs to happen next in this world for those who dare to arrogate to themselves the title of disciple. He makes it real clear. If we're going to make any difference in this crazy world, we have to deal with love as it is. Not as love as we would prefer it to be. John 13, verses 14 and 15 say, Jesus is speaking, You see this ridiculously servile thing that I just did for you, my dudes? Well, I was setting an example for you. Because you should do exactly as I have done. In a very real sense, Jesus was there with us that evening. Tugging and pulling and rolling over and <clears throat> cleaning up and making comfortable again. As if the living Christ within was saying to me, okay then, bro, wow, you finally have a clue. You finally found a way to express love for someone who cannot possibly repay you or thank you or express any kind of gratitude and who probably isn't even aware that you are here in this moment. This is the love you've been avoiding your whole life. Welcome aboard. There is, I think, a vulnerability that kind of comes along every time we receive the love of God, the love of Christ, into our lives. And that vulnerability expresses itself in sacrificing for someone else, making us sharers in that ever-sacrificing love of God. If I sit and think about my life, man, God has had to put up with a whole lot worse things from me than changing a shitty pamper. I'm just saying. And all Jesus asks, really, is that we, as disciples and followers, do what he did. Humble ourselves, get down on one knee, and serve in whatever ways that we are needed. We are not promised that following Jesus is going to be easy. We are not promised that every task is going to be so pleasant and so, you know, so simple to accomplish. But we are promised. We're guaranteed, really, that every for every foot we wash, for every tear that we dry, for every shitty pamper we change, we are standing in the transfiguring power of the heart of God. The one who simply wants us to get over ourselves and do what a true servant 
would do. Today then, first Sunday of Advent, a new liturgical year, wrapping up 2021, moving into 2022. A year ago, so many of us did not expect all of the dramatic fallout from the pandemic. I know three people personally who died because of it. One of them was quite young. We don't know when Christ will come again for us, when the world will end for us, when that final transition will be made. And let's just pray that those who claim to love God will be there with us in that final moment of transition, helping us by serving the living Christ who lives within us and in every human heart. Let's pray. Mighty, healing, diaper-changing God, we open our consciousness and our hearts to your grace in this moment, grateful for the example of your Christ, who chose to play the role of a servant and wash the feet of his friends. Help us today to be more mindful of all the times when someone, someone whom you sent to us, was able to help us, give us a better perspective, dry our tears, change our diaper literally or figuratively, reminding us that love is what love is. Give us today a sense of purpose. Help us to be better observers of those you send us today, that we too might do our best to serve each other. We ask all this in the name and in the natures of Jesus the Christ. Amen.